On Thanksgiving Day, Billy Laredo checked into a Texas hospital with COVID-19. For two weeks, he struggled to breathe but continued to battle. As his condition went from bad to worse, he wrote his wife a love letter, and here is part of it. If I don't make it, I want you to know that I lived a happy, wonderful life with you and would never have traded it for all the riches in the world. I also want you to be happy and continue to live your life without me with no regrets. We had our time and it was wonderful. I love you and miss you very much. I will keep fighting. Love, Billy. Well, sadly, a week ago today, Billy lost his battle with coronavirus and left his wife, Sonia Kipouris, behind. Well, Sonia joins us now from Dallas on a, a very emotional day. She laid her beloved Billy to rest just a few hours ago. Sonia, firstly, uh, our deepest sympathies and respects. We are so sorry for your loss. Uh, tell me about what you went through today and what you've gone through these last few months. Well, it's been very difficult um, because Billy and I both, we got um, we tested positive and on the 16th of November. And, you know, initially we, I had no symptoms, but initially I just thought Billy had a mild version of it. Um, for the first week he was doing fine with mild symptoms. Um, but then, you know, suddenly things turned, things changed really overnight. That was Thanksgiving morning in the middle of the night. Um, and it's just been difficult since, trying really hard to fight for Billy. Um, I wasn't able to be there and be by his side the entire time. So that was even more excruciating because Usually when some your loved one is in the hospital, you're able to be by their bedside. And that just made it even more difficult for me that I couldn't hold his hand, that I couldn't motivate him, that I could only text him and FaceTime him occasionally because he just was so exhausted to even be able to talk to me and communicate with me at times. So. A lot of my communication was communicating with the nurses and doctors when he couldn't communicate. So I was trying to advocate strongly for my husband um, when he would text me and tell me his concerns. I, I can't um, imagine, Sonia, what you have, have been through uh, and, and not to be able to be there and hold his hand and, and comfort him. Uh, Sonia, I mean, he was only 45 years old. I mean, that, that is relatively young. He, he clearly was a fighter. He said he was fighting every single day and he had so much uh, to live for. When did he, he write this, this letter to you? He wrote it about maybe three or four days before he actually got intubated. Um, and, you know, Billy always would leave me little notes, bring me flowers. So it did not surprise me that he wrote the letter. I think it was just devastating when he, the, la the latter part of the letter that he wrote when he was saying, you know, if I don't make this, this is what I need for you to know about how much I care about you. Um, and that was and just- tell me Tell me how you felt when you, you read that letter for the first time. Honestly, I felt hopeless because it was really kind of acknowledging that my husband might not ever come back and see me. And, and that was just difficult for me to accept. Sonia, he said that you were the most important person in his life and that if he survived, he wanted to be a better man and a, a better husband. Um, tell us about your husband, Billy. Billy didn't have to be a better man or a better husband because Billy was, he, I mean, he was a magnificent man. And 
many people, not just myself, love Billy. Everybody that I have ever known who has known my husband, people that I would come into contact with who I had never met would always communicate how much they love Billy. And I entirely understand and identify that amount of love that they experience because I felt that when I met him 21 years ago. Um, so he, he was, mm -hmm. I think that makes it even more difficult because he didn't have to ever, I never doubted my love for Billy. Billy showed me in countless ways and he truly was a man of honor, a man of love, loved by many. And I think that's, you know, I know everybody's struggling right now because many people are lost, but he was just one of the, one of those great people that you come across in your lifetime that you just think, not him, he sh his life should have been taken. He sounds like a, a remarkable person. Sonia, when did you realize that Billy wasn't coming home? I think, um, honestly, I think a couple, I think maybe the next day after they had intubated him, Billy, before he died, had actually coded two times and they had revived him. They had spent about like an hour and they had revived him. And at that point I was mostly hopeful because I was just afraid to be entirely hopeful. I was afraid that God was just kind of messing with me. Um, and, and I guess he was. Um, so I think at that point when he had coded and he had come back, although I wanted to believe that he came back for a purpose and that purpose was maybe to spread, you know, the news of, Hey, look, you need to take COVID seriously. I just thought that we were going to do that alive together. I didn't think that his message was going to come at the sake of his death. Sonia, this pandemic has claimed the lives of more than 300,000 Americans, including your husband. And despite the emergence of, of two vaccines, uh, health experts say hundreds of thousands more Americans will die. Uh, what is your message to anyone who is listening to this? I think you cannot be negligent and you need to be extremely mindful and careful um, about just being precautious and taking all the necessary measures that I thought we took. But we're all human. And I think sometimes we just become comfortable or just, and we're not used to being so hyper vigilant of ourselves when we're sick. And this pandemic is requiring us to do exactly that. Be extremely hyper vigilant to not only take care of yourself, but more importantly, to take care of somebody else that you love, that you don't know how their body, because I don't feel it's just about pre-existing conditions because my Billy had none. So you just need to be vigilant about that this could harm somebody else and you don't know how their body's going to respond to this virus. Sonia, how would you like people to, to remember Billy? Remember that he was larger than life, a magnificent man who loved everybody and who made everybody feel loved. That was my Billy. 
Sonia, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us, for sharing your, your story, your heartache, uh, your pain and, and your message. Um, our hearts go out to you and your family. Thank you. Thank you.